In this video, we will talk about the hormones of the posterior lobe of pituitary. And posterior lobe is also known as neurohypophysis. And we also call it pars nervosa. From posterior lobe of pituitary, there are two hormones which are released. The first hormone is oxytocin, which is also known as pitocin. And there is one more term which is given to this hormone based on its function that we will take up little later. The function which is performed by oxytocin is it stimulates the contractions of the uterine muscles. Uterine muscles, that is the myometria. And when myometrium or these muscles contract, that is when we say the female is in labor. That is, when the uterus contracts, the baby will be pushed out. That is, parturition is going to take place. So basically, it helps in parturition. That is, expelling the fully formed fetus. And that is why oxytocin is also known as birth hormone. function which is performed by oxytocin is it also helps in contraction of the muscles which are around the alveoli of mammary glands so that the mammary glands get squeezed and the milk ejection takes place so it helps in milk ejection by contraction of muscles around memory glands and this ejection of milk is known as galactogogic effect so there are multiple hormones which are helping in this process one hormone which was LTH lactogenic hormone helps in synthesis of milk Oxytocin helps in ejection of milk and ejection takes place when the muscles contract around those alveoli. In case of females, the function of oxytocin is very well understood and every function we have specifically uh, written here. Oxytocin is present in males also but its function in males has not been clearly understood yet. This second hormone which is released from the posterior lobe of pituitary is known as vasopressin or one more name is ADH that is antidiuretic hormone. Two names are given and these names are based on the function that are performed by this hormone. Vasopressin name is given because this hormone results in contraction of the blood vessels, especially the arterioles. Contraction of arterioles. And when the wall of arteriole contracts because of this muscular contraction, and these are smooth muscles which are contracting, blood pressure increases. And that is why it is called vasopressin. It presses the walls of the blood vessels and results in increase in blood pressure. That is why the name vasopressin is given to this hormone. The second function that it does is it helps in absorption of water from the two parts of nephron. One part is distal convoluted tubule and the other is the collecting duct increases absorption of water from DCT that is distal convoluted tubule and collecting duct. When this water is absorbed there is more and more water coming or getting retained in the body. This function is basically 
to regulate the water part in the body. What would happen if the amount or concentration of ADH is more or less? If ADH is more, then more and more water will be absorbed and the urine output would be less or hypertonic urine will be excreted. The condition is more ADH. If there is hyper secretion of ADH, that is hyper secretion of ADH, increased absorption of water, less water in urine and that is why urine is going to become hypertonic. This is one situation. The other situation is when there is less ADH, that is hypo secretion of ABH. If ADH secretion is less, then there would be less absorption of water or in other words, if water is not absorbed, all that extra water will be eliminated in urine. So urine volume is going to increase from normal about 2 liters per day urine the volume can go to 10 liters per day up to 10 liters per day this is what we mean by increase in volume and this condition is known as diabetes insipidus diabetes insipidus in this the urine volume increases but there is no sugar in the urine and the reason why this urine volume has gone up because absorption has not taken place absorption of water and the hormone which is responsible for this absorption of water is ADH so in case of hyposecretion it may result into diabetes insipidus the other symptom of this hyposecretion are two this increased volume of urine is known as diuresis. So we call this increased volume as diuresis. And the other condition is it results into polydipsia. Polydipsia is when a person feels extremely thirsty. So there is increase in thirst. Increase thirst. The person feels very thirsty because that water is getting eliminated from the body. So there are two symptoms which we normally see whenever there is diabetes insipidus due to less secretion of ADH. The important thing which we have to remember is both these hormones are synthesized in hypothalamus but secreted by posterior lobe of pituitary. Because we have talked about this, that the, the neurosecretory cells of hypothalamus, they synthesize them. In the exon, these hormones remain stored. But when it comes to release of these hormones, they get released from the posterior lobe. So, both these hormones of posterior lobe of pituitary.